an abundance of faith in you in the National Football League. We've all heard this before. But Kyler Murray no longer has that excuse. They don't have that excuse, rather, to hold against Kyler Murray. He's measured in at 5 feet, 10 and 1 eighth inches. He weighed in at 207. The, ideally, they usually like their quarterbacks measuring it at 215 or above. Kyler Murray is at 207. Okay? So he's got some pounds to put on. But that's not really the big deal. Here's the biggest deal. His hand size which is a big deal, not just grasping the football, throwing the football, but also holding on to it when you're running and you get hit or you're standing in the pocket and you get hit. The bigger your hands, the easier it is for you to hold on to the football. Kyler Murray's hands measured at 5'9". I'm sorry, nine and a half, nine and a half inches. So, and ladies and gentlemen, in other words, considering all the measurables, he's in a good standing. And as a result, now we get to lean on his talents. We've seen a guy that primarily threw in a pocket. We've seen a guy that can run with the football, the likes of which we haven't seen since Michael Vick, although Michael Vick was a more violent and different runner. The bottom line is we haven't seen anybody that can run the football like Kyler Murray outside of Michael Vick. You want to throw Deshaun Watson in there? I guess it's debatable. I don't think so. And as a result, the question is, should Kyler Murray be the number one overall pick in the NFL draft? My answer is yes. What does that mean? Josh, Josh Rosen, the quarterback drafted out of UCLA, that's with Arizona right now. What do you do with him? You get rid of him. That's what the hell you do. Who should be looking at him? Should it be the New York Giants? Who can grab him and then go out there and draft an offensive lineman? a la what the Indianapolis Colts did. Even though they didn't draft anybody, they drafted Quentin Nelson, but they got Andrew Luck back healthy. What I'm saying to you is this. If you draft an offensive lineman and bring in Josh Rosen as the heir apparent to Eli Manning, that might be good. But there are others out there who say, damn that. Draft Wayne Haskins out of Ohio State with the number six overall pick and go from there. That's what their belief is. Get Haskins out of Ohio State. Now, I know I made a mistake talking about more of a running quarterback. He wasn't. He threw 50 touchdown passes, threw for over 4,000 yards. He flings the football. I get all of that. I watched him against Maryland running the ball 15 times. I watched him scramble out of the pocket against Michigan and just was alluding to his elusivity, but giving the impression that he was more of a thrower or a runner than a thrower was a mistake on my part. I own it. That's that. Haskins is no joke. And some people think the Giants should take him as the heir apparent. So if you're the New York Giants, you got a dilemma. Do you trade for a quarterback like a Josh Allen or do you draft a quarterback like Haskins? Here's my problem. My problem has nothing to do with either of that. You know what my problem is? Pat Shermer, who never should have been a head coach for the New York Giants, based on his resume, that is, to begin with, speaks glowingly about Eli Manning because of his professionalism. So in other words, he's not a headache to you. He doesn't force you to take any extra strength Tylenol, any Advil, any Motrin, Ibuprofen, or anything like that. So because of that, you good. Never mind the fact that he can't move, that he's immobile that he's pretty much done and can't make the requisite throws on a continuous basis. Or that you got a $95 million receiver in Odell Beckham Jr. universally recognized as a top three talent at the position in the entire NFL. With DeAndre Hopkins, with an Antonio Brown, with the Julio Jones, with a T.Y. Hilton and others, with a Devontae Adams and others, with a Mike, you know, Mike Evans and others, he's still recognized as a top three talent at the wide receiver position. And you got Odell Beckham Jr. there. And you just going to sit up there and act like you got all the time in the world to be tolerant and patient with Eli Manning. You see, this is why the New York Giants are in trouble. And then when I heard Dave Gettleman talk about how the GM for the Giants sit up there and talk about how, well, you know what? Eli Manning's gotten a bad rap. Eli Manning is not nearly as bad as people are trying to make him out to be. We find we love Eli. Blah, 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 blah. Excuse me. Excuse me. 
What the hell have you been watching? You haven't watched the underthrows? You haven't watched the overthrows? The man is 38 years of age. He's 38. There's no knock against Eli Manning. I love Eli Manning. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion. He delivered two championships to, to New York City. He's thrown for over 55,000 yards in his career. He's 19 shy of 56,000. I got it. But look at Eli Manning. Over the past six years, QBRs 39, 62, 60, 49, 45, 51. The New York Giants have missed the playoffs. How many times? I mean, what are we talking about here? What the hell is Gettleman talking about? The New York Giants have missed the playoffs six times in the last eight years. I'm talk, I'm sorry, six times in the last seven years. Eight times in the last ten years. I mean, what the hell is going on? What are you talking about? Why are you acting like there's no need for change? Because Eli Manning's such a nice guy? Because he's not a headache? Because he's such a professional? Who raved? Who said anything about that? We appreciate Eli Manning. We appreciate his professionalism. We appreciate the two Super Bowl rings. We appreciate him showing up on the road in Green Bay and getting you to a Super Bowl, San Francisco, and getting you to the next round. We see all of this. Eli's had some big wins in his career, no question, no doubt. That's why he's a champion, and that's why we respect him, and that's why he'll be revered in New York for many, many years to come. But the reality is he's not what he used to be. Meanwhile, Saquon Barkley and Odell Beckham Jr. in a sport as violent as football are being asked to wait. Don't rush anything. Give this guy time just because you like him. That's irresponsible. That's not fair to New York Giants fans everywhere. It's not fair to Odell Beckham Jr. It's not fair to Saquon Barkley. What have you done for me lately? That's what this is about. And the reality is, is that Eli Manning is not the same player anymore. So when you look at it from that perspective, there is simply, absolutely, positively, no excuse for Gettleman and, Sh and Shermer to have this attitude like everything's all right. It's not okay. It's not all right. Odell Beckham Jr. is not getting any younger. Saquon Barkley just got into the league, but this is a violent physical sport. You don't take years for granted. If Eli Manning ain't the dude right now, he ain't the dude. See, there's too much nepotism going on. There's too much buddy-buddy stuff. Folks getting hired because you got a good relationship. You can sit down and have drinks together. You like one another. You talk. That should not be the criteria for hiring a head coach in the National Football League. But evidently, with Mr. Gettleman, it is. That should not be the criteria for keeping your quarterback in the league. But for Mr. Gettleman, apparently it is. Something's got to give, ladies and gentlemen. Something's got to give. And I'm afraid that when you look at the New York Giants right now, the 2019 season for you is already doomed. They basically told you, <coughs> excuse me, the New York Giants basically told you yesterday with Gettleman and Shermer at the NFL scouting combine, they basically told you yesterday, who are you going to believe, us or, your, uh, uh, us, or your, uh, us or your lying eyes? They basically said to you yesterday, you, don't, you didn't see what you thought you saw with Eli Manning. He wasn't protected by the offensive line, blah, 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 blah. He's never been protected by that, but suddenly you're going to bring that up. What you basically saw yesterday was them spit in the face of Giants fans and tell them it was raining. That's what they did. 
because they don't want to trade Eli. And I guess they can't compel him to sit on the bench. Remember, this dude, Laletta, was going go rushing a practice because he knew that he was going to be starting, I mean, you know, practicing with the first unit because he was expecting to start that week. So the fact that that was the case showed you what the New York Giants thought about Eli Manning. But suddenly you want to sit up here and sell us on this notion that he is the future. He is the world. He is the future. He is the one to make a brighter day. So let's start giving. Are you kidding me? There's a choice you're making, gentlemen. Giants' lives are at stake. What you going to do about it? Because Eli Manning ain't going to suddenly learn how to run. He's not going to certainly be different than a stationary target. That's not what's going to happen when it comes to Eli. That's not going down like that. It's not happening like that. Somebody better get there. You better get your act together. Time's running out. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. You're going to make Odell Brecken Jr. go Antonio Brown on you. Y'all keep this stuff up. New York Giants. Keep this, keep this up. He gonna go Antonio Brown and y'all. Tired of listening to this nonsense. Eli Manning's here. Everybody else is there. Kevin Colbert, general manager for the Steelers. Big Ben Roethlisberger is here. They got 52 kids that need to follow him. Really? That's the problem. 888 say ESPN. It's 888 729 One other matter I want to get into before getting to your calls is that the Lakers won a game last night. The New Orleans Pelicans situation with Antonio Brown, I'm sorry, with Anthony Davis sitting down with more than four minutes left in the third quarter. And then after that, sitting down for the rest of the game and never coming back for the fourth quarter in a close, tight fourth game is reprehensible. The league has to do something about it. It's embarrassing. Anthony Davis wants to play, should be allowed to play. He shouldn't be sat down in the fourth quarter. And don't tell me it doesn't draft, drastically shift the, the, the competitive balance. Anthony Davis had 22 points in 21 minutes. 22 points in 8 rebounds, 21 minutes. Brother special. But that's what y'all want to do. This guy got to sit down. Sit down in the fourth quarter of games. Because you're going to trade him and you don't want him to get hurt or something like that. It's ridiculous. It really, really is, and it's embarrassing, and the and Pelicans should be ashamed of themselves. No wonder you're a laughing stock organization as we speak, forcing Alvin Gentry and Anthony Davis to live with these conditions. This is reprehensible. Needless to say, that wasn't a problem with the Los Angeles Lakers last night. LeBron showed up with 33 and killed in a beautiful fall away three um, near the end of the game with Patrick Mahomes in attendance, watching and marveling at him. Rondo, Rajon Rondo showed up in a big way, had 13 assists, looked active all night long. Kuzma and Ingram showed up. So things could be getting very interested in the Lakers. Lakers have Milwaukee this Friday. Then they got the Clippers Monday. They got the Nuggets Wednesday. They got the Boston Celtics a week from Saturday. Look, the Lakers season could be over. Come next Saturday. It's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens. I suggest none of you miss it. 888-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. That was Straight Talk Wireless. Nationwide coverage in America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. We'll get back to your calls and more in a minute. You know what never goes out of style? Surprising a friend or loved one would buy one, get one free multicolored roses. Rose bouquets, rather, for $29.99 for 